And Christians, why? Oh, oh. I remember, one, man, I was at one conference just hammering away about the power of God's life. And a guy actually said, a guy who's been a Christian his whole life, and I don't fault him. He's been taught this. Well, in theory, that sounds good. Yes. In theory, uh, that sounds good. Right. Yeah. No. It's not I'm... theoretical, brother. <laughs> and that's how we're all living. I promise you, man. We're all looking at sin and death like it's Goliath. And we're just, we're just, what did, I promise you, you're bigger than David. And you know what we do? We're looking for theories. You're definitely yeah. bigger than David. <laughs> you're definitely bigger than David. 411? Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. Go stand in the, in the, in the hallway. In the, in the church. In the church, yeah. where we have yeah. David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Sin and death, we, it's like, did, did you think the giant looked bigger than, to David than anybody? And what did David think? No big deal. <laughs> what did David think about that giant? What did David think about the lion and the bear? That God was his sufficiency to overcome right. the lion. That God's sufficiency was more than enough. Do you think David was thinking about his own sufficiency? When Saul was like, bro, you can't go fight the giant. And then after David persisted, Saul's like, well, maybe it's good if he dies. And some people think he should be king. All right. <laughs> we'll, right. We'll let him go. He tried to give David his armor. Yeah. What does David say? I don't need that crap, man. Do you think David was busy thinking of his own sufficiency? No. No. He was thinking of the sufficiency of God's life is more than enough to whoop this giant. And I've been brought forth and conceived in the power of God's life. Amen. Right? Yes. I've been anointed with God's life. Right. His grace, which comes forth from his life. Right? And I think that's one of the big things that people didn't understand about God and I didn't understand about God is that God's grace is born from his life. He's got a power. Mm -hmm. He's got a strength, just like I did with Popeye. Mm -hmm. Right? Popeye, Popeye has a strength that comes from the spinach. Right. Now, God's not Popeye, nor can he ever be weak. So please understand that the example is not like supposed to be impeccably tight. Right? It's a false analogy, but nonetheless, it can help you it's to helpful. see. It's a helpful The analogy. grace that comes out of God is born from his eternal life. Yes. If you go read John 1, it says, in Jesus was life goes on to say he came full of grace, right? right? So there was a life in him that was full of grace. And to all those, John goes on to say, and to all those who make use of that life as if it was their own life, they shall receive what? Power, strength, dunamis, grace, to what? Appear as the sons and daughters of God. Yes. So there's a life in Jesus that is full of strength to do what? Overcome the sin and death that's in the world. That life manifested in him and showed all of us that that life has a strength in it to overcome sin and death. Now, to all those who will make use of that life or receive it, it says in English, which means to grab a hold of it, to make use of it for yourself as if it were your life. To all those who grab a hold of it, they shall be infused with the vitality and the strength of God to overcome the sin and death in the earth and appear as the sons and daughters of God. And oh, by the way, as they walk in the world for a while, they're going to be witnesses. Yeah. Right? Because this life will always testify. The eternal life of God will always testify of the strength and sufficiency of God. It will never not testify. In all things it will testify. 